Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1949 for a strand titled Cover Up. In a small town, Roger Phillips commits suicide. But insurance investigator Sam Donovan thinks it was probably murder. Well, the townspeople are uncooperative, often hostile. The entire town seemed to despise the deceased, but still will not help the investigation. It seems the town is probably shielding someone. Our male lead is Dennis O'Keefe. He was born in Iowa in 1908, and his parents were vaudeville performers, so showbiz was in his blood. He spent his career in B-movies. He wrote the script for T-Man, a low-budget B-movie that was a hit with the audience. It was turned into a radio show with Dennis O'Keefe playing the lead. By the 1950s, Dennis O'Keefe had transitioned to being a scriptwriter and a director. He died in 1968 at age 60. Our female lead is Barbara Britton. She was born in Long Beach in 1919, and she rode on a float in the Tournament of Roses parade, was seen by a movie producer, and as they say, the rest is history. She made movies for the next several years. But in 1945, she consulted a doctor for a nervous exhaustion. Well, she married the doctor and worked less from that time on. Barbara Britton retired in 1955, but before that, she did the TV show for which she is best remembered. During the seasons 1951, 52, and then again 57, she starred in the classic TV show Mr. and Mrs. North. Let's return to 1949. Enjoy Cover Up. about Roger Phillips. I hadn't heard. He committed suicide night before last. Suicide? Yeah. I guess you didn't see it in the papers. How awful. Yeah, you sure was. Where to? Oh, uh, same destination. I guess you'll have to... Do you mind 
if I sit down? Not if you wish. Thank you. I believe we rode in the same car on the train. Really? Yes, uh, yes, I sat right across the aisle from you, as a matter of fact. I rode uh, backwards all the way. I'm sorry, I didn't notice. You see, I was reading. Oh, it's quite all right. You shouldn't be the one to apologize. I should do that. You see, I, uh, I know I snore pretty badly when I ride backwards. And... Why, you didn't snore? You never closed... I don't know why I pretended I didn't see you. Had you? Well, isn't it obvious? Oh, I, don't know, I wouldn't say obvious. I'd say it was uh, nice. Yep, that Phillips fella shot himself right in his own parlor. I don't understand it. Mr. Phillips. He had no reason to commit suicide. Some folks look at it like it was the first good deed he ever did. Donovan, help me with my packages. I don't know how I would have managed otherwise. Oh, you'd have managed. Well, that's exactly what I told her. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me help you. Thank you, Mrs. Rodeby. Can I drop you any place, Mr. Donovan? I don't know, sir. I'm just going to the hotel. We'll drive you there. Across the street, Kathy. <laughs> is that where it is? Hey, if anything I can do to make your stay more pleasant, why, well, just say the word. Oh, that's very nice of you, but with any luck, I think I might be out of here by the night. Mr. Donovan is an insurance investigator. Oh, here on business? Yes, yes, the uh, Phillips case. Oh, the Phillips case. His death was a great shock to all of us. Now, in case you do stay over, the town gets kind of dull at night. Uh, why don't you stop by the house? Anyone can tell where we live. Well, yeah, I may take you up on that. Bye. 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 Mr. Weatherby. Bye, dear. Where did you pick him up? I didn't pick him up. I met him on the train. Oh, it's quite all right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I met your mother the same way. Stu, you promised you'd never tell what happened. <laughs> Something on your mind? Of course not. See the show. Come in. Sheriff? At least until the next election. Sam Donovan, Federated Insurance. Federated Insurance? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, I uh, I figured somebody'd be around. Oh? Why? Twenty thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. Especially for a man like Phillips. Oh, I uh I need a little help filling out the suicide report. Do you mind? No, no, not at all. Sit down. Thanks. You got the uh coroner's report? You know, you smoke too much, one cigarette after the other. Yeah, yeah, I know. It saves a lot of time. Now about the report. The coroner's going to visit his folks for Christmas. Oh, that's convenient. When will he be back? Oh, sometime next week. Oh. I, uh, I don't suppose you've had a chance to make out any report of your own. No, no, I'll get around to it for a long. Yeah, sure, sure you will. No official report. What kind of a gun did he use? You know, you, uh, try smoking a pipe instead of all those cigarettes. 
Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I've got some stock in a cigarette company. Now, how about the gun? No gun. I understood he shot himself. He did. Then where's the gun? Disappeared. Disappeared? Oh, now, look, Sheriff. It'll turn up. It'll turn up. Yeah, well, it better. What about the bullet that killed him? Huh. You city fellas, always in a rush. I told you the coroner will be back next week. Now, why don't you relax, sit back, steal yourself a little rest, wait for him. Well, that sounds attractive, Sheriff, but you don't know insurance companies. Now, uh, what about the bullet? You know, I bet if you ever started smoking a pipe, you'd never be without it. So I'll get a pipe. Now can I see the bullet? No bullet. What is this, Sheriff? No report, no gun, no bullet. Maybe he isn't even dead. <laughs> we don't generally bury folks around here unless they're dead. Uh -huh. well, where's he buried? Seems to me we held our last funeral in the, uh, in the cemetery. Well, anything would be different. Sheriff, I want to see that bullet. Maybe it was buried with Phillips. Why wasn't it removed? Well, a fellow commits suicide, that's generally that. Mm -mm. Not in my book. No? No. No bullet, no pay. Now look, uh, Sam. Maybe the beneficiary won't like that. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe she will. You see, if uh, Phillips was murdered, there's a double indemnity clause. My, my. What do they think of next? Well, they'll think of a way to get the bullet. Well, it seems a shame that Phillips is buried so deep. Now you better start digging him up. <laughs> oh, that'll take a court order. So I'll uh, get a court order. Quick man with a shovel. Thanks. While you're digging around down there, you didn't happen to come up with the gun, too, did you? You know, there's nothing like a pipe to slow a man down. We're not slowed down, we're stopped. Oh, my pop always used to say there's no pockets in a shroud. What's the sense of rushing so you go right past the thing you're looking for? Take it easy. Then you might never catch up with it. Nine millimeter Luger, huh? Maybe. Now, you've been a big help. Thanks. I'm only doing my duty. Who found the body? Abby, jeweler down the street. Nice fella. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Maybe I'd better ask him some questions. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. I'll, uh, I'll take the bullet. Wouldn't want to lose the evidence. I'll be seeing you, Sheriff. Any time at all. I'll be here. So long. You shouldn't talk so much. That's beautiful. You know, I think Em would like that. Uh oh, there goes my bell. Can I do something for you? Yes, please. I'd uh, like to see Mr. Abbey. Certainly. Oh, I'm afraid Mr. Abbey doesn't need any insurance. Oh, I'm not trying to sell it. You see, my company insured Mr. Roger Phillips. Oh, well, just a moment. I'm not sure he's in. Sorry, he must have stepped out the back way. I didn't realize that. Oh, that's uh, it's quite all right. I'll uh, I'll catch up to him another time. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to buy a compound. Oh, are you 
you back so soon? I, uh, I came in the back way. Oh, this is nice. Yes, Mr. Donovan. I understand that you discovered the body of Phillips. Yes, I did. You mind telling me what happened? But I already told everything I know to Sheriff Best. I'll take this one. Any objections to repeating them to me? Nothing happened. I just went up to his house and there he was, dead. Was that all? Yes. But why are you so interested? Oh, uh, we insured Mr. Phillips. When you saw him, was the uh, gun still in his hand? Why, well, yeah. I didn't see any gun. You're sure? I think I'm sure. I see. Well, thank you. How much is that? Twelve thirty-four, including tax. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Sorry, I couldn't be of more assistance. It's all right. I'm getting used to it. I suppose you had a lot of trouble removing the powder burns. There were no powder burns. No powder burns? And there usually are when a man shoots himself. Yes, I know. But don't worry about it. This one didn't. Well, thanks very much. I'll be seeing you. Got the caution gave about keeping the place locked. I just came from a visit to the undertaker. Mm -hmm. He says there weren't any powder burns on the body. You don't say. I saw your friend Abby, too. Didn't I tell you he was a nice fella? He says he didn't see a gun. That's so. What happened to him? Well, I told you it disappeared. You know anyone who might have a look at? Oh, sure. Lots of people in this town got Lugers. I got one myself. Fired recently, hmm? Yep. Two, three days ago. Chicken hook. Missed him. Oh, too bad. Let's see, that's, uh, that's just about the time that Phyllis was killed, isn't it? Finger slipped. It's all right, Gabe. Everything's under control. We gotta have a little more system around here. You'd have made a pretty nice target busting in here like that. Gabe, it looks like progress has caught up with us. We're about to get a lesson in higher ballistics. Put away that gun. You don't want to go killing anybody. Not at Christmas time, anyhow. You were uh, you're a pretty good detective. It's a Luger, all right. It's a mystery to you up until now, of course. Nope. I, uh, I don't suppose you killed Phillips, did you? Well, no, I never figured much on myself as a suspect. I'd better watch out for my appearance. I'm liable to get my picture in the paper. Sure, if I work for a very funny outfit, they insist on a day's work for a day's pay. No, that's downright inconsiderate of them. What other evidence have you got besides the Luger bullet in the empty shell? Well, let's see now. Yes, there was a puddle of water on the floor. No, that I've got to see. It's all dried up. Where does the beneficiary live? With her husband. All new stuff in this town. Buried dead people in the cemetery. Husbands live with their wives. What's her address? Oh, uh, why didn't you ask me? Nice little place over on Elm Street, uh, 958. Thanks. If you're figuring on going over there to see her, you're going to have a long wait. She went out of town with her husband right after the funeral. will be back tomorrow afternoon on uh, 419. Thanks again. Look, Sam. Take my advice. Don't be so all-fired anxious to pay double indemnity on this case. Why don't you forget about it? Go on home, visit your folks for Christmas. Sounds great, Sheriff, only I, uh, 
haven't got any folks in my homes wherever I happen to hang my hat. Besides, I've been looking for an excuse to stick around. I think now maybe I've found it. You know what I think? What? I think you're going to be no end of trouble. And Blakely, I think I've run onto something pretty important. Looks to me like this guy Phillips was murdered. In fact, the whole town knows it and nobody seems to care, including their sheriff. Well, if it's murder, you stay right there and prove it. Now get to work. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. You ought to come down here and try it. I've talked to everybody in town. Nobody said a word. Well, stick with it, Sam. Prove it's murder. If I do, that'll cost the company an extra 20,000 bucks as a double indemnity clause. So what? When the newspapers find out we're spending money to pay double indemnity, we'll sell $10 million worth of insurance. Besides, maybe the beneficiary killed him. Then we won't have to pay anything. Yeah, you would think of that. Okay, I'll stay with it. I'm stuck till tomorrow, anyhow. Operator, would you uh, please connect me with the Stuart Weatherby residence? Yes, thank you. never moves, Anita. There's a fella in town on that Philip suicide. Only he don't think it's suicide. How do you know? I got ways of knowing. Hilda, has that friend of yours, the long-distance operator, been listening in on calls again? Listening in, indeed. Gertrude wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, no? Not much she wouldn't. Well, anyhow, I know about the insurance man. We all know about it, Hilda. His name's Sam Donovan. He phoned this afternoon and said he'd be over tonight. And Nita has a crush on him. Kathy, I have not. Then what were you watching the clock for? Mother. Girls, no quarrels, please. And you should have seen her when she got off the bus, up to her knees in clouds. You were up to your neck in them when I saw you simpering in the dining room mirror. Around here. Good evening. Mr. Weatherby in? Yeah. You that insurance fellow? Yes, that's right. Can I interest you in a policy? How do you know? Even knows enough to clean his shoes. That'll do, Hilda. How was I to know he'd turn out human? Oh, I bet you say that to all the boys. Let me take your hat and coat. Thank you, Mr. Weatherby. Mrs. Weatherby, Nita. Well, hello, Kathy. Hello. How are you? Fine. I got a little surprise for you. Oh, what is it? You look at it, it looks right back at you. If I only could open it. Kathy, before Christmas? Oh, it's okay, Mrs. Weatherby. Let her. Thank you. Step in and make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. I'd like to. I haven't really been comfortable all day. Hi. How are you? Look, Mother. A compact. Compact. Just another mirror for her to stare into. May I take it to school, Mother? You see? Mm. Looks like I've started something. Oh, no. Hilda's never happy unless she's unhappy. I was afraid you might have a day tonight. No. Well, it's not a very big town, and there... 
Can't be very many beautiful girls like you running around loose. Is that your number two sales approach? No, number one. For you, nothing but the best. Well, uh, business all settled, Mr. Donovan? Uh, no, Mr. Weatherby. As a matter of fact, I didn't. I'm stymied here until tomorrow. So I'm taking the sheriff's advice and just relaxing. What can we do to stir up a little excitement? Here? In this town? Impossible. There's a good movie. Oh, wonderful. If it's all right with your mother and father, I'd love to. Yes, of course. Good, I'll get my coat. Can I go too? No! Good night, Mrs. Weatherby. Good night. Kathy? Good night, Mr. Sam. So you ran into a little difficulty. Oh, I guess you could call it that, Mr. Weatherby. I'm having a little difference of opinion with Sheriff Best. I'm ready. Good night, sir. I don't bother. Thanks for the present. Look, Mother, isn't it beautiful? It certainly is. The island of Moana, rising from out of the clear blue sea in the distance, can be seen the majestic model of the South Seas. Good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The sunset finds us passing the quaint fishing village of Manaloa, with its myriad of fishing huts Boats. Why don't you look at the movie? I already Shh. seen it twice. Shh. See it again. It ain't that good. Shh. Why don't you kiss her? Why should I? Well, she's pretty. Thank you. house in this town. Sure, right across the street. Go see that picture. Oh, I just remembered I seen that one already, too. By any chance are you trying to get rid of me? How did you ever figure that out? I got brains. I like to bowl. Well, go bowling, then. Cost Happy bowling. Thanks. Come on, Herman, we got enough now. Out of billowing clouds, an emerald mountain rises. You know, I haven't done anything like this in years. Like what? Oh, you know. Movie. Show it in the corner drugstore. Walk your girl home. Kiss her goodnight. Phillips? Well, yes, but I'm Mrs. Baker now. I'm from Federated Insurance. I know. You're Mr. Donovan, uh, aren't you? Won't you come in? Thank you. Nice place you have here. Thank you. It belongs to my mother-in-law. Oh. How did you know my name? Oh, Anita. Anita Weatherby called me. Oh, a friend of hers. Yes, we went to school together. Oh, I see. Um, please sit down. No, thank you. Mrs. Baker, I came here to Cleburg on rather a routine matter. Make out a report for my company about your uncle's death. However, I'm afraid now that I'll need a great deal more information before I can do that. But, uh, why? Because, Mrs. Baker, very probably your uncle was murdered. Oh, no. No, he committed suicide. If your uncle was murdered, the policy pays double indemnity. I couldn't accept it. It wouldn't be right. He killed himself. Well, if he 
did. It's the first time in history that the gun ever got up and walked away. Please, he committed suicide. Lady, I'm offering you an extra $20,000. I don't want it. Do you know any enemies that your uncle might have had? He wasn't murdered. Who had reason to kill your uncle, Mrs. Baker? He wasn't murdered. Very well. That's the way you want it. Looks like I'm going to have to prove it to you, too. I heard. He suspects something. Well, there's nothing to suspect. See here. You don't think, much as I hated your uncle, that I killed him. We were at the station the whole time together, remember? We never left the station. Take you any place? Any place. Nice place you have here. The natives are so friendly and talkative. They are awfully clannish, aren't they? A person is considered an outsider until he's lived here at least 20 years. <laughs> I hope it didn't take that long to know you. Oh, no, I've been exposed to civilization. Good. <laughs> Finished your business? No. No, believe it or not, I'm looking for a Luger automatic pistol. Is that one of those German guns? That's right. Well, that should be easy. I'm sure my father will lend you his. Have I said something wrong? I don't know. You see, Phillips was killed with a Luger. Well? It's an unusual gun. Is it? I need a Mr. Phillips was murdered. What are you going to do? I'd like to go over and take a look at the Phillips house. Would you mind driving me over? Oh, no, of course not. City. Well, well. Looks like I'm going to have to rearrange my opinion of the sheriff. I don't understand. I marked out the whole story of the murder. Son of a gun knew it all the time. Phillips stood about here when he was shot. Snow or rain from the killer's coat dripped on the carpet there and caused that puddle. Couldn't have shot him from there, though, because there weren't any powder burns on the body. Probably came in to see if he did a good job. That little mark over there is where the shell ejected. That means that the other set of marks is where the murderer stood up. You could see better if you turn on the lights. Hello, Anita. Welcome home. My very best. Hi. You know, in this part of the country, housebreaking is against the law. Oh, it was my fault, Larry. The front door was unlocked. Yes, I know. I unlocked it. I, uh, I sort of expected callers. Hey, uh, since you knew all this, why did you try and sell me that phony suicide story? Well, now, I don't like to be hasty about these things. Larry, what kind of a gun killed Mr. Phillips? Honey, I believe the consensus of opinion says it was one of those Lugers. 
Are you sure it was a Luger? Oh, now look, sugar. I know what's in your mind. Forget it. Don't give it another thought. Well, there's a lot of those kind of guns around here. As a matter of fact, uh, the sheriff has one. Yes, I, I sort of like him myself. Well, if you'll excuse me, I really must be leaving. Oh, what's the hurry? I have to pick up my mother. Oh. Bye, Larry. Bye, Anita. See you tonight, 7.30. Sure, fine. What kind of a scare have you been throwing into that girl? Her old man owns a Luger, or hadn't you heard? Well, now that's mighty convenient. Maybe we can blame it on old Stu. You know, I, uh, I once read a book where the detective was the murderer. <laughs> it's lucky I'm a sheriff, not a detective. Although I did have a motive, I owed Phillips money. No. Now, you're just too convenient for a good suspect. Is it all right with you if I close up the place now? Was anybody home the night Phillips was killed? Well, his niece lived with him, but uh, she was busy that night getting married. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't he at the wedding? Maybe he didn't know they eloped. Maybe he knew they eloped and didn't like it. And maybe Frank knew about that insurance policy and uh, liked it. I'm probably unreasonable, but it seems strange to me. Murder a man for profit and then turn down an extra $20,000 on the policy. I see your point. Maybe you're right. I ought to try a pipe. You're all right, Sam. You just don't understand small town folks. We all live together here, and it's no good throwing suspicion and ruining reputations. Smoke indicates fire. A fellow may as well pack up and leave once talk starts. I don't go in much for autobiography, Sheriff, but uh, I happen to be a small town boy myself. Born and raised in Glenwood, Minnesota. I recognize a lot of the symptoms here. Well, then you should know that too many folks are anxious to assume a man is guilty the minute he's arrested. The way it looks to me is that the whole town hated Phillips. Well, you amaze me, Sam. How did you find that out? Now, look, Sheriff. I can take a joke as well as the next man. But murder's serious, even in a small town. Either we cooperate or I go at it my own way. You'd be surprised what I might find out. So long. just sticked her own job, this household will be run more properly. You know, Mr. Donovan, I'm just fascinated by the insurance business. Really? Oh, yes, just fascinated. And just what is it that fascinates you so about the insurance business? Well, um, I always did like mathematics. Oh, figures, eh? Yeah, I like them myself. Oh, yes, they really intrigue me. Oh. Would you care for a cigarette, Kathy? Um, well, I, I, I don't think so just now. I don't feel like it. No, sir. Well, you don't mind if I do. Oh, no, no. I know lots of people who smoke. Yeah, I bet you do at that. Is Anita home? Oh, you want to see her? Yes, yes, very much. Well, she's upstairs. I'll go call her. You know, I think I ought to warn you. Anita was never any good at math. I'm taking advanced mathematics. Good evening, Mr. Weatherby. Oh, hello, Sam. How are you making out with the Phillips suicide? No, it wasn't suicide. It was murder. He was murdered? Yes. Shot to death with a Luger. You know anyone in town who hated Phillips enough to kill him? Phillips? I'm afraid he uh, wasn't very well liked. Well, that's a masterpiece of understatement. However, the Luger narrows it down. Do you, uh, you know anyone who owns a Luger? Well, not specifically. 
course, uh, any number of ex-service men might have brought one home with them from overseas. Dad, I already told him that you have a Luger pistol. That, Mr. Donovan, is my own daughter trying to send me to the electric chair. Well, when I told him, I didn't know Mr. Phillips had been killed like that. Oh, that's all right, Nita. I, uh, I did bring one back in 1918. Oh, you still have it? Why, well, uh... You give that gun away long ago. Yes, yeah. Do you remember who you gave it to? Let me see. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh... Give it to Doc Giroux before he moved to Fairfield. That's right, yes. Hmm. Uh, when was this? That's about five or six months ago. Uh-huh. Were uh, Phillips and Giroux enemies? Well, regardless of that, Dr. Giroux doesn't take lives. He saves them. That's Dr. West of Chicago. How far is Fairfield from here? About uh, five miles south. Would it be an imposition if I asked to use your telephone? Why, of course not. Thanks. I want to call Dr. Giroux. I'm afraid you can't do that. Uh, the first thing Dr. Giroux did when he retired was take the phone out of his house. Can't say I blame him for that. You can see him tonight. That's where? At the square. He's the one that always lights the Christmas tree. We're going to get there in time. We'd better get a move on. Didn't realize it was so late. Bessie, it's time to go. I'll be right down. Kathy, you hurry up. You going with us, Sam? Oh, I wouldn't miss it. All right, Bessie, let's get going. Gee, I see one for me. Where's Dr. Gerard, Murray? Look, a lot of candy. You know, Stu, I think you're the only man in the county with nerve enough to wear that old moth-eating coat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that thing was on. Not till I have my turn. About this coat, I say anything good enough for my father is good enough for me. <laughs> That's exactly what your father used to say about the same coat. <laughs> Sam, why do you have to question Dr. Giroux? Well, I just have to follow through, that's all. Please don't. Just this once. Why not let well enough alone? I've got some bad news. What's the matter, Larry? Dr. Giroux won't be able to light the tree. He died about an hour ago. Heart attack. I'm going out there now. That's quite a shock. I can't believe it. I have to tell them something. Folks, we just received some news about Dr. Giroux. I'm going to let his closest friend, Stu Weatherby, tell you about it. I don't know what I can say that can soften the shock of what I must tell you. Dr. Giroux is dead. He died peacefully about an hour ago. And so he won't be able to light our tree tonight or give out the presents to the children. To the youngsters, I suppose, it seems as if something happened to Santa Claus himself. But to the rest of you, I can only say what you already know. Dr. Giroux was a great man in our community, loved by all of us. He brought half of you into the world. He helped us in times of sickness, many times even when we were well. And he has left upon our town an indelible mark of his goodness and humility and generosity. Although he can't be here tonight to light our tree, I know he'd like us to keep right on. So, in the name of our very good friend, Dr. Peter Giroux, I'll light our tree. The ceremony wasn't as gay as I told you it would be. Shame about the doctor. Too bad you didn't know him. He could have been a wealthy man, a, a famous man. But he preferred to be just a simple country doctor. Good night. Good night, Mr. Weatherman.
You know, I couldn't help seeing something besides sorrow in your face when you heard about the doctor. Well, Sam... You didn't want me to question him. Why? I don't know. Yes, you do. And I've got a hunch I know what you were thinking. But you're wrong. You know, if you're going on being suspicious of the men in your life, you and I are going to get in a lot of trouble later on. I didn't need it. Did he kiss you again, Nita? Like last night after the show? What do you mean snooping into my diary? Kathy, 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 Kathy. Oh, I didn't know about it. You, you, you get to bed. And if ever I catch you reading my diary again, I'll... I'll tell Hilda. Oh, I won't, Nita. Honest, I won't. Why should I worry about your silly old diary? It doesn't mean anything to me. But, uh, just to make sure, you better find a different hiding place. <laughs> Then when I got over there at Giraud's house, he was dead. Heart attack. Did you get the coroner's report on Phillips? You forget it's Christmas time and this is a small town. Well, stick with us, Sam. Okay. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm going up to the sheriff's office now. I'll be seeing you. Personally, I think you're both lying. I wouldn't advise that, Frank. I'll tell you what happened, Frank. You quarreled with Phillips when he caught you eloping. During the quarrel, you shot him. That's why you won't take double indemnity. That's why you want the case stopped. Wait. We did quarrel with my uncle. And we eloped because he didn't approve of Frank. But Frank didn't kill him. Sheriff Best knows that. And just how does Sheriff Best know that? Because my uncle called him to throw Frank out. Sheriff Best was there when we left. Sorry, Sam. All right, all right. Tell me again what happened when you left the house. We went to Abby's jewelry store and bought the wedding ring. Then we went to the bus depot and caught the 814 bus. But no one killed my uncle. He committed suicide. If he committed suicide, what happened to the gun? Why weren't there any powder burns? I don't know. Okay, so your uncle was alive when you left him? Yes, he was sitting at his desk. 
And you, Frank, you went directly from the Phillips house to the jewelry store and into the bus depot, right? Yes. Either of you leave the bus depot for any reason before the bus pulled out? No. Did you ever quarrel with Phillips over Margaret before? No. Okay, that's all. Thanks, folks. I'll call you if I need you again. Thanks. Not an alibi in the whole lot. Frank and Margaret say they were at a depot, alone. Abby and Mrs. Abby say they were home, alone. And Stu... Stu says he was out taking a walk alone. Well, I'll tell you, Sam. You play around with it for a while. If you can't prove any of them did it, you always have me. It's a nice town. Yep. Nice people. Be a good place to live. Yep. If you're on the right side of the fence. Yep. Can't you say anything but yep? That calls for a pretty obvious answer, don't it? Yep. Hey. Where were you the night Phillips died? Thanks, Cabby. Hilda. Oh. Hi. What's the matter, scare you? No. What's wrong? Nothing. Maybe you did startle me just a little. What are you doing here so early? Oh, I couldn't get here early enough. Or, uh, or could I? But there's no one home and I'm going on an errand. Can I drive you anywhere? Sure, thanks. Sure, nothing's bothering you? No, nothing, Sam. I thought maybe you'd had a chance to think about the uh, way I said goodnight. Oh, no, it isn't that. I guess I am a little jumpy. Haven't had my coffee yet. You know, if I get a break, I may close this case this morning. I had a feeling all along that Abby's been holding something out. I've got a hunch he saw the murderer when he discovered the body, or did it himself. You want to go see Mr. Abbey now? Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. You got any matches, sugar? No, Sam, I, I never carry matches. That's okay. Take about a week. Thank you. Hello, Anita. Welcome home. Hello, Mr. Abbey. Mrs. Abbey. Uh, Mr. Abbey, there's a couple more questions I'd like to ask you. But I already told you all I know. Maybe. If you'll come into my office. I'll only be a minute, sugar. Well, Anita, it's nice to see you back. Thank you. May I sit down? Yes, of course. Aren't you feeling well? Can I get you a glass of water? Oh, no, thank you. Well? Come on, sugar, let's get out of here.
Sam, what did Mr. Abbey say? He'll have to hang himself if he lied. He knows who did it? Sam, I've got to know. Okay. Frank and Margaret lied. Oh, no. Yes. The way it looks now is that Frank did leave the bus depot that night, double back and probably kill the uncle. Abby says he saw him running from the direction of Philip's house about the time of the murder. But they didn't do it. You can't accuse them. What's the matter with you, Anita? What makes you say that? Why? Well, I've known Frank and Margaret all my life. They couldn't do anything like that. You'd be surprised who commits murder. Oh, Sam, before you came here, our town was like a quiet little haven. There was never a hint of anything terrible like this. But now everybody's a murder suspect. Our lives will never be the same. Well, Sam, can't you please drop the case? Well, Anita, don't you understand? It wouldn't make any difference whether I dropped it or not. Because somehow, some way, someday, somebody else would pick it up and follow it through. Can't I make you see what you're doing? I think I do know what I'm doing. Right now, I have to get over to the sheriff's office, face Frank and Margaret with this, find the murder gun, tie it up with them, and wind this thing up. You want to take me over there? Claims an alibi. Your father is Frank's alibi. Anita. I've got to go over to the bank and see your father. You want to go, honey? No, no, I'd rather not. I'll see you later. I did see Frank. I promised him a personal loan. I knew he was taking the 814 bus, and uh, when it got almost bus time and he hadn't shown up, I set out for the depot to give him the money. But I met him before he could possibly have reached the Phillips house. What did he do then? Well, he told me he had forgotten the money in the excitement of his elopement, and then he ran back to the depot to catch his bus. What did you do, Mr. Weatherby? I went back home. Well, I'd like to take a look at that Luger that you gave to Dr. Giraud. I suppose that if he still had it, it's someplace in his house. Oh, it's probably there in his gun collection. I don't know how you'll get in, though. Uh, the house is locked up tight. I'll get in. Thanks, Mr. Weatherby, very much. Glad to be of help.
my son. Think that loan will take care of your personal worries? Sure will, Mr. Weatherby. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Right. Thanks very much. Mr. Sheriff. Hi, Stu. Sam, what can I do for you? Want to borrow some money? We'd like to see you privately if we can, Mr. Weatherby. Of course, come in. You recognize this? Mr. Donovan seems to think this is your gun, Stu. It, uh, it does look like it. But it probably is it. You won't believe it, but uh, I did give that gun to Dr. Giraud. That's where he found it. You know, uh, Mr. Donovan's quite a detective. He tested that logo for fingerprints, but found that there weren't any. That uh, means something? Mr. Donovan seems to think so. Means that this is the gun that killed Roger Phillips. And it was wiped clean of prints and planted back at the doctor's. Now, Sam, don't disillusion me about your ability. We don't know that's the gun that killed Phillips. After all, the doctor might have wiped it off and put it back on the wall. And then there's, uh, there's that Luger of my own, you remember. Yes, and don't forget that I've got a bullet out of that Luger of yours, you know. Ah, this was the gun that killed Phillips. Still stinks of cordite. Chicago Ballistics Department can prove it with one test shot. Wait a minute, Sam. There's too many people in this town wanted to see Phillips dead. If I arrest the wrong man, he may never live it down. Then you're not going to send the gun to Chicago? Not yet. All right, Sheriff. Okay, if that's the way you want it. There's other ways of smoking him out. As you're fond of saying, I'm quite a detective. Little impulsive, isn't he? Sam Donovan. I'd like you to run a little item in the paper for me. What is it? I'm bringing an expert in here tonight. And he's a scientist with the Chicago Police Department. He'll take up a section of the carpet where the killer stood, put it under a microscope and analyze it. If it was a jeweler, say, that stood there, little tiny particles of gold and silver, things like that will be in the water that ran off. Even tell the material, the color of the coat. But won't the murderer read it and try to destroy the evidence? I hope so. Thanks again. Doodles! Replay for page one. Oh, hello, girls. Hello, Dad. Hello. Getting everything ready, huh? The first time I can remember. Usually you don't bring the tree home until late Christmas Eve. Oh, they're much cheaper then, you know. This one's beautiful. Yeah, but the price was ridiculous. Not that I put up with all this nonsense, but it does happen to be Christmas price indeed. Well, it was all right then for me to pay $12 for it, huh? $12? You must have been out of your mind. But, Hilda, it is Christmas, you know. Sal will be over pretty soon. Well, uh... Your mother's downtown doing some last-minute Christmas shopping. And I've got to pick her up in a minute or two. Then I'll be back. It's even prettier than last year. I like it. 
You know, neither fathers are funny critters. I don't think so. I mean, the father goes on for a long time, loving his children, never really knowing whether they love him or not. And then something happens that lets him know they do love him. It just does something to you. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling, you know. What about Mother? You gonna pick her up? Oh, indeed I am, or someone will have to pick me up. I'm just a city boy trying to get along. All I want to do is wind up this Phillips mess and let you people enjoy your Christmas. Well, I didn't murder him, sorry to say. Now, the murderer should get a prize. Uh, everybody in the whole town seems to know who did it. Pretty big secret for a whole town to keep. Oh, that's a pretty tree, Hilda. I can almost taste your Christmas dinner. Sam. Hi. I didn't quite get the reading of that line. Was that why Sam or why Sam? <laughs> I didn't expect you so soon. Look. That's me, Sam the Unexpected. Oh, Anita, that's very sweet. Oh, not until Christmas, 12 o'clock. Well, that's just a rub sugar. I don't know whether I'll be back by then. Back? Yes. Looks to me like I'm going to be busier than Chris Kringle tonight. I found that Luger out of Dr. Giroux's today. Does that end the case? No, no, it doesn't. It looked to me like it was planted. But if this works, I think I can wrap it up tonight. Why, Sam, this is a deliberate trap. Oh, the murderer set his own trap. You mean this is possible? Oh, sure, sure it is. But that's not the point. All I want to do is draw him into the open. You're going to be waiting at the Phillips house. I know you are. But if he comes there, you'll expose him. Well, that's right. Are you going through with this? Well, Nita, I have to. Hilda! You mind your own business. the insurance? What happened? It was dirty. I was cleaning it with some gasoline. The spark from the incinerator fell on it. You were cleaning that coat with gasoline in the snow? You were trying to destroy it. did it on purpose. But there's going to be a new coat for Mr. Weatherby under the tree on Christmas morning. And he's going to wear it if I have to burn every other coat in the house. Don't forget to take your present.
can't see you, Sam, but in case you're feeling trigger happy, it's me. Sheriff? Didn't you expect me? Maybe. Yes. Yes, maybe I did. You know, you're making me mad, Sam. Not exactly hilarious myself. Why do you want to go around making people unhappy? Oh, I'm like Hilda, unhappy unless I'm unhappy. Nobody's coming to your party, Sam. Nobody? Nobody else, is that what you mean? That's sort of what I mean. Wouldn't be in the nature of a confession, would it? If it is, it puts you in a sort of a tough spot. Me? If I'm your man, I can't very well let you leave, can I? Maybe you can't keep me from it. Which means you have a gun, too. But you wouldn't be foolish enough to draw it. I'm the sheriff, Sam, the highly respected sheriff of Marlowe County. When a man pulls a gun on me, I generally take it he means business. If you get me first, that's murder. But if I get you with a gun in your hand... What is that, sheriff? Just a lot of votes at the next election. Can I open my presents tonight, Mom? I never heard of such a thing. I could sleep later tomorrow, then. <laughs> yes, you will. If I know my Kathy, you'll be the first one up in the morning. I've looked all over this house. I can't find that evening paper. Are you sitting on it? No, I haven't seen it. Don't look at me. It was right here on the table. Wasn't it, Nita? Why, yes. All right. What's happened to it? Are you so upset about Stu? There's nothing in it anyway except the usual sports results. And that story about that police expert that's coming here. What police expert? Oh, I don't know. The one they've sent for on the Phillips case. I was reading about it in Beauty Shop. Well, uh, what about it? Oh, I don't know. Um, something about testing the floor with a microscope. They seem to think that the uh, rain from the murderer's coat carried some of the coat's material with it. I think I'll hop in the car and go get a paper. All right, dear. Hilda, what did you do with I my... I had a little accident today with your beaver coat. What happened? I was cleaning it and it caught on fire. Burned up completely. going. I know you do. I found your diary upstairs. Dad, I know it's a deliberate trap. He'll be there waiting. Yes, but it must come out sometime. Jobs are a lot alike, Sam. Just simply a case of two people doing the same job in a different way. I'd like to tell you a story about that, if you listen. Why? Well, it may help you to see things in a different light. Go ahead. This story is about a case I worked on once, right in this town. A fellow was killed. Under circumstances a lot like the ones in the Phillips case. Matter of fact, the man was a lot like Phillips. You forget I didn't know what Phillips was like. Seems to me you should have a pretty good idea by now. Anyway, this man was a mighty unpleasant individual. I'm putting it mildly when I say he was a blight on the whole community. He lived here a long time. Seems that mean people always live a long time. 
You're predicting a long life for me? I'll let you know after the story, Sam. I don't think there was a man, woman, or child in the whole community who wasn't hurt by this man at some time or another. And there was another man who lived here, too. Just the opposite. He loved the whole town and everybody in it. And he watched this man year after year, gradually destroying the lives of everybody he loved until he couldn't stand it any longer. And one night, funny thing, it was just about this time of the year, too. What's time got to do with murder? It was Christmas time, Sam, just like now. <laughs> Yes, I should have made my story a little shorter. I hoped with everything I had that it wouldn't be you. I kept telling myself it wasn't you, but it couldn't possibly be you. I almost had myself believing it. Now you show up. Why didn't you stay home where you belong? I decided I had to come here and try to tell you what happened that you night. You don't have to tell me, Mr. Weatherby. You might as well have had a photographer here. No killing ever looked less like a suicide. When we take up that carpet, it'll prove that you stood there, that the coat that Hilda accidentally burned dripped and left your signature. I know you can prove that, Sam, but I was... But it wrong. wasn't your first stop. Your first stop was here. The singed drape, the ejected shell proved that you stood there. This is where the shot that killed him was fired from. I didn't stand there, Sam. I didn't think you'd make it tough on me, Mr. Weatherby. You came in the door, then you hid here. The prince proved that. You pulled your gun. When Phillips got out of the chair to see who it was, you shot him. It wasn't you. It couldn't have been you. Only a left-handed man could have fired the shot from this position. A left-handed man. Giraud. Dr. Giraud, of course. The picture in his collection with the gun in his left hand. The pen set on the desk. Everything for a left-handed man. Yes. It was Dr. Giraud. Sam, you sure stirred up a mess of trouble, but you didn't let me down. You're quite a detective. You knew it was Doc, too? Yes. I've known Doc all my life. I probably noticed he was left-handed. And then maybe it helped knowing that he was the last man to see Phillips alive. Of course, Sam here worked it out the hard way. How did you know he was the last one to see him alive? Well, Sam, you forget I was here when Margaret and Frank left. I left myself shortly afterward, and as I was pulling away, I, I saw Doc going in. I suppose I should have come to you right away, Larry. Yes, you should have, Stu. But I guess it would have turned out the same anyway. You mean you were both covering for Giraud? Looks like it. But why? I told you once, Sam, I wish you had known Dr. Giraud. He wasn't just a man in this town, he was a symbol. It's heart. You saw how the people acted when they heard the news of his death. I couldn't let them know that he, he killed a man. So his last act was for them. I know he tried every other way he could to get Phillips to stop. Don't you see, Sam, no matter how wrong he was in Doc's tortured mind, what he did was for them. I guess he stopped thinking of the problem as a man and took the medical point of view. Seeing this malignant growth strangling his town, he decided he'd have to operate to save it. Then I came to town and upset the apple cart. You were making things rather uncomfortable, Sam, for everybody. Margaret, Frank, Abby, even me. When Doc died, you really were in a tough spot. Your only witness dead. You're right, Sam. I was in a tough spot. You see, that night after meeting Frank, as I passed by, I heard a shot. I ran in, I found Doc Giraud with a gun still in his hand. I took the gun from him, didn't realize till later it was mine. I went over there to see if I could help Phillips, but uh, I couldn't. Doc said, well, Stu, call the sheriff. He wanted to give himself up right away. But, well, I, I talked him out of it. Until after the holidays. 
You both covered for a man so that a town could have a Merry Christmas. That's about the size of it. Sam, Doc is beyond any punishment we can give him. Margaret once said that if it turned out not to be suicide, she'd like your company to give the extra money to some charity. Doc had a lot of them. Of course, you and I know how this case will go into the books, but does everybody have to know? Just thought I'd mention it. Dad, I beg you not to come. You had to do it, didn't you? You had to. Oh, Sam, why did you have to come here at all? Anita, everything's all right. Don't blame Sam. Even Anita, Anita, listen to us. Your father's not in any trouble. He didn't do anything. I... I've been wrong all along. Like the... Sheriff is so fond of saying I'm, uh, I'm not much of a detective. Did you like the movie? I hope so, because me, my wife Judy, and production manager Dan LeClaire, we enjoy bringing you these old black and white murder mysteries from the 1930s and 40s. And if you enjoy seeing them as much as we enjoy presenting them, we invite you to join us every Thursday and Friday night at 7 p.m. and other times during the week as our schedule allows. You can see the best of them right here, black and white murder mysteries on Hastings Mystery Theater. Good evening.